Okay, I think I have 15 books. 15 seemed like an appropriate number. I've read a lot of books this year. These are my favourites in no particular order. So the first book is kind of in a particular order because it's one of the very first books that I read this year and that was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and I read this on holiday which was the perfect place and time to read it because I had a long time to just sit and read in the sun and it was glorious and I was by the sea and the book is set by the sea. It's, it's a real page turn of this one. I found that the first few chapters were not so easy to get into, but once I was into the story, it was just rip-roaring, fantastic. Absolutely loved it. I'm not gonna go into the plot of this one because it's a classic, it's pretty jolly well known, but it is very atmospheric. Um, it has a real sort of gothic feel to it and it's really the kind of book that I love. The second book might be a bit of a controversial one. It's a real Marmite book and most people, it seems, didn't like this book. It's The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. Now I read an advanced reader's copy of this, which was super, super exciting. When it came into the bookshop, I was absolutely over the moon. It was one of my most anticipated reads of the year and came out pretty early in the year. When I picked this up, I really didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know what sort of book it was. And I think that, that was a really great way to read it because it's really one of those books that defies genre again, because Ishiguro is so good at this. And it's, it's kind of medieval fantasy but in a very slow-paced literary fiction dealing with themes of memory and love like most of Kazuo Ishiguro's books but it's dealt with in such a different way so yeah similar themes to his other stuff but the, the story is is very strange and Again, a very atmospheric read. I did a full review of this book, so I will link that in the description. The third book on this list is The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber, which, again, a very atmospheric read. A very strange, genre-defying sort of book. The closest thing that you could put it in would be sci-fi, I suppose, but it doesn't really feel like a sci-fi novel in the usual sense. This is about a man called Peter who is a missionary and he goes off to this new planet to convert the the resident aliens of this planet and it's really really unexpected. It's about religion but it's not a preachy book which I like. Religion's just one aspect of this and it's it's really about human connection and Faber does this by kind of removing human connection. So we appreciate it in its absence. It's a really great read and I listened to this as an audiobook. It's a long book, but it really didn't feel like a long book. So I'm looking forward to reading more of Michelle Faber's work in the new year. The next book is also a sci-fi novel. I cannot believe that there are two sci-fi novels on my favorites list of this year. But this one is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which was just delightful and I just love the way that Becky Chambers deals with these these issues which are so present in our real world society but really explores them by taking them out of this context and putting them into a new context and I just wish that more sci-fi would do this because science fiction is such a great opportunity to explore these themes in a kind of allegorical way. So it really deals with issues of race and gender and sexuality. It's it's really, really delightful and I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about this book, I don't think. Everyone I know who's read it really enjoyed it. The next one that I actually have a copy of is The Hours by Michael Cunningham. Oh, this book. I love this book so much. It is so so beautiful and I read Mrs. Dalloway this year as well. He takes Mrs. Dalloway and he uses the story of Mrs. Dalloway and also the story of Virginia Woolf writing Mrs. Dalloway and it's kind of hard to explain but there are there are three women in this book and they're all in different time periods yet they all have sort of parallel or linking stories and it's done in such a such a beautifully poetic subtle way. I got to a couple of pages before the end and it was my bus stop so I got off the bus and I went and stood under some shelter because it was raining 
and I finished the last few pages standing on the pavement. It was that good. The next book is one by John Irving, whose work I hadn't read before this year. This one is called In One Person, and it is about this main character who is bisexual, and it's mostly about his experience of his sexuality. It's a, it's a builder's roman, and it's sort of quite a quiet novel about him growing up, about the people around him, about their identities. There are lots of literary references as well, which is quite fun. It's a slow-paced novel, it's it's definitely not a, a sort of eventful novel, but it's quiet and it's it's really well done and it's one that I want to reread. Actually that probably goes for all of these books. If it's made it onto my favourites list, then it's something that I would like to reread in the future. Which definitely goes for this next book, which oh this this book broke me a little bit, but in a good way. I cried. I don't often cry at books, but this, oh, I love this book so much. It is A Place Called Winter by Patrick Gale. I'd previously read Notes from an Exhibition, which was also very good, but this was just on a whole nother level. I think that it's very underrated on booktube. It's been quite buzzy in the publishing world, but yeah, I haven't really seen it much on booktube, and I hope that that will change because it's set around the turn of the century, it's about a gay man and there is a scandal and he is sent away to rural Canada. Canada's sort of still being established as a colony and there's this expansion going on and so he goes off to the prairies and it's about what happens when he gets there. Actually he, he doesn't get there until probably about halfway through the novel. Whereas Notes from an Exhibition was quite quiet, quite slow. This one I felt was much more fast paced. I think it would make a fantastic film. Again, very atmospheric. The setting is very evocative. It's an emotional roller coaster, and oh, I love it so much. I love it so much and you should all go and read it. The next book is a ghost story, a kind of gothic tale. It's very Brideshead-esque and I really, really enjoyed this as well. It was another audiobook and it is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. I read Fingersmith this year as well and I really enjoyed that, but there was just something about this one that was just on another level again. And I think it's, it's because of the ambiguities in it. You're really not quite sure what's going on. There are various ways to interpret this book and I actually read this as a buddy read with some other people on booktube and it was fantastic to be able to compare notes and see how other people interpreted it because I interpreted it quite differently to other people. So it, it is a, a ghost story or can be read as a ghost story. Probably not one to read by yourself at night when nobody else is in the house. Atmospheric seems to be the word for this list of books but it really is very atmospheric. Like I said, it's very Brideshead-esque, has that kind of Downton Abbey feel to it. It is set at that time where the British aristocracy is kind of... there are lots of changes. It's set in this old house which is sort of crumbling as well. So if you like things like Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier or Brideshead Revisited or Downton Abbey, any of those kinds of things, then this is a book that you'll probably enjoy as well and ah oh, the ending, the ending. 